First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for their impeccable work and uh, apologize uh, for having uh, provided my slides with an awful delay, especially to the overseas audience. Uh, the history of the hospital restarts again at the beginning of 2016 when uh, MSF uh, Switzerland took over the Al-Qaeda hospital in the Eid Governorate. The, ho the hospital was virtually no more working because uh, of lack of uh, shortage of staff and, uh, and uh, equipment. Uh, this is a warm up and uh, as you can see, the front line is between Thais and Ib, and that is exactly where the hospital is, about uh, 15 kilometers from the front line. So according to the original planning, uh, the hospital was expected to receive and treat mostly civilian uh, casualties from the, from the conflict. Uh, the hospital consists of an emergency room, an operating theater, an ICU level A, that means with, without ventilators, and a 50-bed uh, inpatient sur <coughs> surgical department. Aside, there is a maternity, but that is run by the government, and uh, MSF plays no role in that, except for providing cesarean sections when requested. Uh, so the first patient was admitted on the 21st of January of last year, and it was an appendicitis. Uh, <laughs> so 11 months later, uh, nearly one calendar year after the beginning of activities, we decided uh, to give a look to the data, to the standard reporting data, and to see whether they could be used for some more in-depth analysis, especially to review the activities of the first 11 months. Uh, very briefly, in uh, OCG, the data collection is arranged from, from hospitals, is arranged in different registers. There is a register for the emergency room, one for the OT, and one for the intensive care. And the data from this register uh, are at individual level, and they have a unique identifier. So they, they can be... Uh, <clears throat> Cross together and patient can be patient movements can be can be tracked. Uh, then we have another register for the IPD, and unfortunately, <laughs> this type of data are only aggregate. This is very important for the quality of data, as we will see, as we will see later. Uh, actually, this is the Excel with the data from ER, which from uh, where from most of the data for this uh, study were taken from. It would be nice if we could go through the single data points, but of course in a much more, <laughs> more specialized uh, session. Uh, this is actually two pictures from the R. This is the red room, this is the yellow room. And uh, so as for the volume of activities, in 11 months there have been 8,000 ER consultations on 6,000 patients. Of course, it's not that about 2,000 patients were so unlucky as to fall ill two or three times, but most, there were a lot of follow-up uh, consultations. And the, the patients were young, median age 20, and mostly male. As for the type of activities, you can see there were mainly surgical activities as expected, but non-surgical were quite represented, 40%, <laughs> and we will come to this later. If you, we look a little bit better into the surgical activities. Surgical is actually a category that we created combining trauma, acute abdomen, and C-section that make up, let's say, the, nearly the, the totality of, of surgical uh, causes of admission. The first surprise is that, as you can see, trauma accidental, that is essentially traffic accidents, uh, takes the lead with 60 six percent and uh, trauma violence is about which is war essentially is about one third of that uh, this is the triage room where patients are triaged also waiting room and this is the, these are the data for triage uh, you all know what triage is in ocg we adopt a four level triage scale and you also know that green is the less severe than yellow and then uh, red is the, are the emergency cases. 
So as you can see, the vast majority were yellow and red. That means that the, the concept of a hospital for acute cases worked quite well. And uh, these are the outcomes. These are ER outcomes. Eh? So what happens to the patients after the ER consultation? As you can see, two thirds were discharged and about one fourth was admitted. Uh, Usually, to assess the, performance or the performances of triage, uh, outcome data are crossed with triage data, and that's what uh, uh, we did with this analysis. And generally speaking, a patient is said to be under triaged if is uh, triaged green and admitted, and over triaged if is triaged red or yellow, and then discharged. There are some standards for that. Usually the over triage should not be more than 50% and under triage less than 5%. Of course, over triage is uh, accepted better because it's less dangerous for the patients to be over triage than under triage. So this is essentially our under triage and our over triage, you see, as you can see, is a little bit high, 72 for the yellow and the third, one, nearly one third of the patient triage to be emergency were discharged without admission, which is a little bit too much. Uh, then I was asked by the reviewers to provide some data on the procedures. Unfortunately, these data proved not much reliable. Just as an example, these are the, uh, the from, from the data, this, this is the number of uh, of uh, chest tube insertion in ER over 11 months, and of course it's not uh, plausible to have only 36. So I'm sorry, these data uh, are not are not reliable. And much more interesting are these uh, trends. These are the number of patients over the months. You can see this is February and so on until the end of the year, and you can see that the numbers are steadily increasing over time. Uh, likely sign of sex. And this is also an interesting trend. Again, these are the months, and you can see the distribution between surgical and non-surgical causes of admission to ER. As you can see at the beginning, it was going quite according to the expectation. The surgical, that is trauma, although albeit not, uh, uh, not war, okay, was prevailing. But you can see that across the year, there was a steady increase of non-surgical, and I, I would also add obstetrics, although I'm not showing the, the slides about that, uh, until at the end of the year, non-surgical was actually exceeding the surgical case, the, 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 yeah, the surgical cause of, causes of admission. Uh, so, I'm quickly coming to the conclusion. As for the data, our Data uh, proved reasonably adequate for more in-depth investigation, but there are areas of improvement, of course, that I will uh, very shortly touch upon. As for the hospital, we can say that the consultation have increased uh, steadily over the year, but there has been a shift uh, from the original target patient that needs to be at least thought about and uh, and. Uh, and uh, decided upon. And then uh, there is some possible over triage that needs also uh, some investigation. The limitation, of course, are the reverse of the successes. So there have been, very, I could do very limited uh, data quality control. I could do only internal check for, you know, plausibility or consistency, but of course I could not access the, the patient charts. Uh, the data on procedures are underreported, as we just said, and there's also an important uh, information that is missing, the detailed epidemiology of injuries. Actually, I was, this is also another request from the reviewers to add it to the presentation, uh, but unfortunately, these data are not collected in ER. Uh, as a proxy, I can provide some specific data on the mechanism of injuries as requested, but only for the patient who underwent an operation. These are the 1,000 patients who underwent a surgical uh, operation. And as you can see, the, sorry, uh, for, some, for somebody who is interested on the specific causes of injuries, this class, surgical classification is a little bit better. Uh, 
Here, by the way, gunshots are prevailing. You should not be surprised because uh, all, uh, blunt trauma is prevailing as a cause of admission to ER, but it's well known that uh, blunt trauma as compared to penetrating trauma uh, requires much less often a surgical operation. And usually gun, gunshot requires also multiple operations. So the workload for OT, of course, is, 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 uh, is higher with uh, with uh, violence injuries but still the workload for you are is is much more with with traffic accidents i think uh, i've finished and the last limitation is that we don't have unfortunately outcome data because they come with the ipd <coughs> of course you know you know the outcome when a patient is discharged as long as the ipd will be only aggregated there will be this very very important limitation uh, in our data. I thank you very much, and uh, also to the workers at Kilo Hospital. Thank you very much, Stefano. So do we have any uh, quick questions of clarification? Uh, I think there's one there, if you just say your name and affiliation as well. Thank you, I'm, Ce it's working. I'm Cecilia from MSF. Um, my question, um, I'm, I'm an infectious disease specialist, so I'm not a trauma specialist. But what I often hear in MSF is this discussion about having access to, to victims of violence and to have response to these uh, victims of violence. But what I see in your presentation is what we see very often, that finally we turn out doing other kind of surgeries, surgeries instead of uh, surgeries related with uh, trauma. So the question is, uh, even in Yemen, which is really an acute conflict right now, so the question is, uh, would you still recommend to have an OT to respond to victims of violence, even if you know that most of your surgeries will not be related with violence? It's, it's a very difficult question. Uh, for sure, an OT is necessary, because surgery is necessary. Uh, we all know, uh, but what we are trying now to uh, to change within MSF uh, that actually uh, is a little bit more sophisticated. I hope we can go through that in the discussion. Surgery is important. Uh, war, war, you know, war victims are somehow uh, represented, but this concept of providing very sophisticated surgical care, care for the red injured patients with the forward surgical uh, capacity, it, which is actually taken from the military, has so many limitations in our uh, scenarios that needs very, very, uh, needs to be considered very well between applied. But so far, it is very sexy within MSF to have this, you know, forward surgical uh, facilities, but the impact they can do is actually very limited for two reasons. First of all, because uh, the red injured patient have a very, very high mortality anyway, even if treated at the best. And second, because they are very few. And third, because it is very difficult to screen them and to address them and to dispatch them to the appropriate place. Yeah.